I was born a poor black child. <laughs> that's, that's what I always think of when I'm when I'm asked this question of, you know, how did I start my my home service business and wind up selling it? I mean, I'm asked that a lot, you know, in one way or another. And I always think back to this movie in the uh, in the 70s. Um, uh, it was with Steve Martin. OK, I know a lot of you weren't around even. <laughs> You, lucky you were born in the 70s, but it was a big movie in the 70s called The Jerk uh, starring Steve Martin. And it's, the movie starts out with, you know, my story. Well, I was born a poor black child. And he goes into the story of how he became, how he became successful, right? And so that's what always makes me uh, think of when, I, when I'm asked this question. And look, I never, you know, I never thought that, that I would start, um, in, in my case, my home service business, a plumbing business. In fact, I never dreamed of becoming a plumber. Becoming a plumber wasn't even my, on my top 100 list of things to do. You know, how about you, right? Plumbing or whatever it is, HVAC, electrical, painting. You know, I've, I've yet to truly meet any trades guy that says that I, I, I dreamt of becoming, this is what, when I was a little boy, this is what I wanted to become, you know, a plumber. So it wasn't even on my list. But as life happens, you know, we kind of fall into the trades. And that's, that's kind of the story um, I've heard now thousands of times. Um, literally all over the world. Um, and it's, it's my story as well. You know, I, I, you know, I fell into plumbing. I got out of the service and Navy and um, it was just, um, you know, bumming around, kind of just kind of lost or whatever. And, and, and had a friend who's working at a plumbing business and it was a good company and it says they're hiring and, you know, do you want a job? Yeah, I want a job. And I got into plumbing and, and actually found out I was pretty good at it, you know, and that's the story I hear. And that's probably your story. You know, you're, you're pretty, you find out you're pretty good at working with your hands. Um, you have that kind of interest and, and you find out you're really pretty good at the trade. And so you start really doing well at the company. Um, customers love you. Um, you're making the company all kinds of money, you know, in your head. Right. And so the thought is, you know, instead of making that guy money, this guy money, I'm, I'm going to go, you know, customers love me. I can do this. I'll make all the money myself. And so you start your own business. And that was my story. You know, I decided, uh, well, quite frankly, I was fired, <laughs> you know, for some, there were layback, you know, layoff or something, you know, was something, you know, wasn't, I was just let go. Right. And so it was at that time I decided, well, they kind of pushed me out. Well, I can do this. There's plenty of work. I'll, I'll do it. And so that's what I did. And so, you know, I, I jumped into it and just started, you know, started a company. Now I've always, and I've always kind of had an entrepreneur bent. You know, and I see this with, um, you know, our students in the academy or even our clients, especially our clients that we work with. Um, there's this you have an entrepreneur bent about you. And in my case, um, it, it was, you know, I, I had a music background. And so, in fact, those that even meet me, if I meet someone from you know, my old high school days or my kid days or whatever, you know, it's like, Richard, what are you doing with music? I was always in music. And, um, in fact, I, you know, I had some time in Nashville and all that kind of stuff. And those, those are different stories before plumbing. And, um, and so when I, people meet me or, you know, from the past to whatever, it's like, what are you doing with music? They're surprised that I'm plumbing and had a plumbing business and went that route. That's not even my, you know, who I am, but that entrepreneur side was always kind of part of me. Cause one thing that I loved about music that I was attracted to the music side is of course the music and, you know, and I had, had some talent for that. Um, but it was, I remember the first concert that I went to that, um, you know, of course, love the concert, but I was amazed that people paid what I paid, you know, in all these seats. And so I was looking at that. And if everyone paid this, you know, man, there's, there's like 15,000 seats in this place and everyone's paid what, man, they're making. So not just, it's not about the music, but if I could sell seats like this, and then you're looking at the, you know, the, the albums and, the, you know, back in the day when they had albums. Okay. That's how I was thinking. And you sell a million albums and you're getting a piece of that. Well, how much is it? Man, that's a lot of money. So that's kind of how I looked at business. And so it wasn't a far leap just naturally when I started getting business. You may kind of relate, you know, and I see this again with, with, with our students in the academy and our clients. They do have this thing about when I, when I hear their story or we find out their stories that, you know, when, when they were a kid, they sold baseball cards or they were the kid in school that was always um, working some kind of deal and getting, getting money out of guys or, or flipping cars. You know, a lot, of, a lot of guys would, you know, hear a story even before they could drive. I know guys that before they drive, they were buying cars and, and fixing them up and flipping cars. Okay. They had that entrepreneur bent about them. Okay. And, and that's what I had in part of me as well. So that idea of, well, instead of working for this guy, I'll, 
I'll go start my own business and and, and work for myself and, and and make more of the money myself, right? And so that's the, the thought that kind of drew me. Um, and it, it was just the right time when they, they let me go or whatever. It's like, I was already kind of thinking that way anyways. So it just pushed me to get into the ring and do my own thing. So I, so I start my plumbing business, right? And you now looking back, um, there, there's really kind of kind of three phases to to having your business, and these aren't technical terms. You know, I, I can get into all the, the business jargon, but it's it's basically I call it you know it's a new job, okay? It's a new job phase, and then there's the survival phase, okay? And then there's the thriving phase, and it really when we look at them, it, it really works out that way. And so when I started my plumbing business, that's what I you know I jumped into the the new job phase, which is basically when you start your business, it's just a job that you own, okay? It's just it's just your job. All right. It's your comp company or whatever, but, but you're still treating it like a job. So basically you own your job. Okay. And, and that was the, you know, the first phase that I was in, you know, you get, and so that's, it's the same kind of thing that goes with a new job. You're wanting to, you know, um, make the, you know, make sure you look good in front of the boss, you know, that you do the job. Okay. What you think the job is. And, um, it's just the basic, you know, I'm showing up to do what it is that they hired me to do. And so it's the same kind of thing with, with my plumbing business. You know, I was trying to track, you know, so the boss or look good in front of the boss, the boss was customers, right? So I'm trying to find customers and, and, um, and, and look good in front of them. And then of course do the plumbing job. Okay. The plumbing job itself. And and be very good at that, okay. So that I keep my keep my job, right? Um, but we soon find out that it's much more than the plumbing job. That having a business is much more than whatever it is the you know the, the trade that we're doing, right? Um, it's it's the old E myth thing, uh, Michael Gerber's E myth. In fact, if you haven't read that book, I recommend that you read that book. That it's called the E myth. OK, and it speaks on this, you know, uh, an example that he has in the book is, you know, you're, you're a great a baker, a great, you know, you make great cupcakes. OK, and so it's like, well, I want to sell these cupcakes to everyone. Well, you, you know, you open up your cupcake store and you soon find out it ain't about the business, ain't about the cupcakes. OK, it's about the business. All right. And that's the final phase. So, you know, that I got to. So basically, I own my job for the first four to five years. I mean, it's, it's, it's that phase of where, you know, I've got customers, customers, you know, that, that love me. I got work to do. Um, I'm doing whatever work, whatever work I can. I'm working, you know, um, 24 seven basically. Okay. Um, but we're doing all right. You know, we, we got, a, we got a house, I got the kids, I got a car, a minivan, sport minivan. Okay. We go on a vacation, Disney world or whatever, living that life. But basically, it's still, I'm just owning my job. I'm, I'm really kind of living week to week, paycheck to paycheck, month to month, um, really not creating any kind of um, real business, which creates wealth, okay? Um, wealth being, you know, financial wealth and time wealth, as we talk about. And that's the phase I was finally, you know, finally got, got to. It was time, you know, I realized in my, in my new job phase that there's more to this job than, than what I know. Okay. There's something else here. I don't know something. And that was the time period in the, in my business, about four years in four, almost five years, um, where that, that hit me. And I said, I don't know something. And, I, and it hit me. I don't know business. And that's when I sought out a coach. Now, back in my day, they didn't, we, we didn't have this kind of, you know, coaching, you know, like what, what I'm doing and, the, you know, the internet and, you know, all the gurus out here and information that you can get. We didn't have that. Okay. So I, I sought out a, a business group and uh, um, long story short, it was a CEO group. And of course I felt like a fish out of water, man. I was, you know, these, these guys and gals were smarter. I mean, they knew business and I just felt, but you got to, you know, to get bigger, you got to be in a bigger room than, than what, you know, bigger room than what you're used to. And so I, you know, I, I joined this group and as, um, as, uh, as luck happened, I don't necessarily believe in luck. We make our own luck, but as, um, you know, faith happened, um, I wound up meeting a guy, um, that was the CFO for Mayflower trucking and long story short, you know, he's, he was an old, older Jewish guy from the East coast. And I'm some young redneck punk from the Midwest or whatever, but we, we struck up a friendship and, and, um, I wound up begging him to teach me business and, um, and he would give me in, you know, pointers and that kind of stuff. I said, no, I want to meet, can we meet and do that? And I want to pay, you know, offer to pay him. 
Um, and, and I said, he didn't need my money or whatever, but finally, because I was putting skin in the game and I was aggressive and that kind of thing, we wound up meeting, you know, once a month. And, and of course I could email and ask questions and that kind of stuff. And it was from there that I actually learned business. Okay. The idea of that, um, I wasn't selling plumbing that I was selling time, um, you know, the right kind of, uh, you know, how <laughs> the right kind of branding, uh, the right kind of marketing, um, the right kind of, you know, how to attract the, the right kind of plumbers and to retain them, all right, and train them, all those kinds of things, um, you know, actually, you know, how to look at that and, and how to do that. And so it was that period of time. And I call it, you know, again, that's kind of a survival time, okay, because you're, you know, you're still working and you're, you're learning all these, all these things and, and putting all these things in place and, hey, everything doesn't work out, you know, the, the first time, okay, so it's, it's, uh, you know, if, if you've been listening, you know, for a while um, to me, you know that, you know, one of, my, one of my sayings is, you know, movement is life. Okay. He's got to move. Okay. We, um, we, we get comfortable in an area or things aren't going, going well. We kind of want to hold back or pull back. You can't do that. And that's why I learned these kinds of lessons was this period of time that I, that I learned those, those lessons that um, it's, uh, you know, it's a ride. You got to learn to enjoy the ride. It's up and down. Now, hopefully you're, you're taking the up and down and it's going, it's going up that the trend is up. Okay. As you're going up and down and you, but, but so you learn those trends, you learn how to handle those emotions. And, you know, and I did, and, and looking back, those are, um, you know, so as, as we talk with our students and our, you know, the clients and, you know, and I want to come across to you, look, if you're in that period of time, I, I was looking back, wish I would have relaxed more during that period of time. Doesn't mean that you're not, you're not focused and you're not um, pushing. Looking back at this, at, at this time in my life and now way on, on the other side, that's the period of time in, in my life I wish I would have relaxed more and would have enjoyed the ride. So that's why, you know, I say a lot, enjoy the ride, enjoy the ride. This is, this is life is happening here during this time. And it's not that you're being lazy, whatever, you're still working on things and all that, you know, there's just the reality to the business that there's ups and downs. And sadly, I see a lot of guys and gals, that this is also the time that they, they finally, um, they finally quit or, or, or give up. Um, in fact, you know, stats tell us that 95% of all home service businesses fail within the first three years. Okay. Um, that's that new job, that new job time. Okay. They wind up getting fired. <laughs> okay. Um, but the sad part is that uh, the, the 5% that, that keep their job, all right, um, wind up just 97% uh, of those just wind up surviving, okay, living week to week, paycheck to paycheck, okay, they're just uh, um, you know, going, going through the paces, they're not learning the lessons, okay, they're not making that full transition, okay, through the survival time, and that's where a lot of home service businesses are, and, and quite frankly, that's what we enjoy, you know, with uh, you know, million dollar pro here in the success Academy. Um, that's, that's who we work with. Um, and also, you know, the new job or whatever, but it's getting into that phase. Cause that's the phase that you get through that phase and life can be good through that phase. You still, you know, you're, that's also kind of a, you know, a little bit dangerous time because you are making money. Okay. And you have good times and it's a time you may start buying more toys than what you should and all that kind of stuff. And I, I made those mistakes. Okay. But I made it through that time, that survival time. Okay. And then when you get past the survival time and you got the systems in place and really when you get all the systems, the right kind of systems in place. And, um, you know, it winds up becoming like a, uh, you go from having a job to actually own an, an asset. Okay. And that's really what you, the business is, is an asset. Okay. Um, a money making asset. Um, I, I call it a little money making machine. Okay. And so you do get it once you get the systems in place. Doesn't mean that the machine doesn't ever break. Okay. For example, it doesn't mean that you, know, you got a good crew and then you come in on a Monday and two of your guys have quit or, you know, something's happened or you get on a bad job or you got a bad customer or, you know, things um, um, that you, you get sued, even when it's not your fault. By the way, if you get, if you've been around, you're making money out there, you are going to get sued and it's not going to be your fault. It's just how it is. We live in a litigious society. Okay. So those things kind of happen. Okay. And it, it happened, happened to me. Um, but you get past those times, you, you know, and um, learn how to live through those times and adapt to those times and work through those times, you get into the, the thriving time, okay, the, the, the machine is working. And you know how to when you got to oil it and how the machine works and everything when you where you got to hit it with a hammer, you know, whatever it is, okay. All right, you get comfortable with that, and you learn that and you get into thriving, the thriving time. And, and that's a time that I finally, you know, we, we 
you know, we made it and got into the thriving time. Um, and it's good. You're just milking the cow. Okay. You're just, you know, you're the golden goose. All right. And, um, and it's good, but it also can be bad. Um, because it's a time again, where you can get comfortable. All right. And comfortable is not good. Um, comfortable leads to, um, not having your eye on things. Um, it leads to, um, being overly confident, which is not good. Okay. Um, you always want to be looking at your business, your asset. Okay. What, okay. What's, what can go wrong? What's happening? You know, that kind of thing. You don't have to be freaking out. You don't have to, you know, panic and, and be upset and work stressed. Okay. But you should always have your eye on things. You know, as you know, I, I love movies, you know, and so I, I see things life in movies. And I just shared one, you know, from the seventies movie, the jerk, you know, I was born a poor black child, another movie, you know, I, I look at this kind of a thing and give the example of how to kind of as the business leader, as the business CEO, and that's what you are. That, that is part of the transition. I had to transition from that of looking at myself, first of all, as, you know, a poor black child. Okay. I was poor, I literally came, you know, from apartment projects. Okay. Uh, I didn't, I didn't have any money. I was a broken home, um, all those kinds of things. And that's kind of how I, the demons I carry with myself to this day. Okay. I kind of see myself that way. Okay. I've cleaned up. I look, I look fancier. The lovely Laura has cleaned me up and civilized me. Um, and in having money and means and that kind of stuff and, and different and, and having an opportunity to be in different um, environments, uh, you know, gives you a different look. All right. And understanding. Okay. So I've, I've been blessed to have that now, but I, inside, I still see myself as that, that guy, you know, from, from the apartment projects. Okay. Um, with hand-me-down clothes, not, not hand-me-down clothes, but with goodwill clothes. Uh, worse, I mean, even the, the free ones. I mean, that, that's where I, where I come from. And then starting the, you know, I never looked at myself, you know, when I started the business, okay, I discovered I was really good at the plumbing trade and I was, a, you know, became a master plumber. And in fact, to this day, I still, you know, I'll say I'm the best plumber you've ever met. Okay. <laughs> even though I haven't turned a wrench, I think the last thing I did here in our home, I think I installed a toilet seat. <laughs> okay. All right. But I was good at the trade. I looked at myself as a tradesman. Okay. But the business, that's not good. Okay. I had to make that transition from looking at myself as a tradesman to um, looking at myself as a C CEO. Okay. That's what the business needed. Okay. Um, and so I had to make that transition. And that's what we work with you with as well as, you know, it's just, that that's a that's a big transition okay going from the tradesman mindset to a ceo mindset to an owner mindset and so when you get into it and finally get that mindset okay um it's important that you still look at the business that way and so that mindset demands that when even when things are going well it's your responsibility to be looking out at you know what what could be happening okay and there's a the times i didn't do that you know and it's 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 just the reality, you get comfortable. It's nice when you come from nothing and now you have stuff and you feel like, okay, what I'm doing is working and it feels good and life is good and all this other kind of stuff. You can take your eyes off things. Okay. And so it's the movie reference, you know, the movie 300. Okay. Um, you know, with uh, the Spartans, all right. When they go to war against the, the Persians or, you know, whatever. And, and they see there's a scene in that where, where the Persian boats are being crashed upon the cliffs, you know, with the rain, the storm and all that kind of stuff. And, and everybody else is happy, but, but King Leonidas, okay. The King, which is you. Okay. Um, is all right. It's, it's good to see this, but he's more stern. He's more stoic uh, because he re realizes there's more to come or what, what don't I know? You know, those kinds of things. Okay. That is a, you know, mentality you gotta, you gotta hold on to. Okay. You can enjoy, you know, the fruits of, of your success and all those kinds of things. But um, I had to learn that I still had to keep an eye on things. And a couple of times I didn't. Okay. Um, you know, you can get, get overly confident and, and you have squirrel moments where, um, you know, it's like, you know, a squirrel moment for me was almost when to get into HVAC, I was successful at plumbing. And of course, we, you know, your customers are always asking about, well, do you do heating and cooling or they, you see that there's just money lying around. Right. And, and, and that, that kind of a thing. Um, but bigger is not necessarily better. OK, um, you know, I, I wind up not getting into and starting an a HVAC division. But I looked at the numbers and just realized, you know, it is, it is different. Even the trades, the way making money and all that's very similar. OK, and, you know, we work with all the trades. Obviously, the way, you know, the business is very similar, but there, there is nuances um, within, you know, the customers and, and, and the, the technicians and, of course, the, the business as well. Um, and so I didn't go that way. 
In fact, I had to learn that the idea is really that that better is best is just to um, it's to double down on what what you do, okay, and make it better, even if it's already good, and even even better, okay, already a better, make it better, better, okay. That's the thing to do, okay. And during this thriving time, we can get cocky and just not realize what's happening in 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 the world in our market. OK, another example I like I like to, to use or that I think of is is Blockbuster. I don't know if you remember, you know, back back in my day, you know, it was, you, you didn't have just any movie you wanted, you know, on on your computer, on TV. OK, you had to go you had to actually go to this place, a store, video store where you could rent movies. OK, Blockbuster. And they were huge, dominant, well, a billion dollar company. OK. But really, within just a, a couple years, they just they became extinct because they didn't keep their eye on the ball of what was happening. They en were enjoying their success and they was thriving and it was a billion dollar you know company. And of course, things change; the market changes, and they didn't stay on top of that. Okay, so um, on, on top of that, so they became in, in extinct. The same thing can, you know happens with, with our companies. Okay, and it's. You know, so the thriving time, you know, I'm just thinking back, it's, it's, it's a great time. You know, you're feeling good. Um, you know, guys, I get, I get it, you know? Um, and I, I know that's why, you know, probably why I'm, you know, I'm asked this question a lot is because I know you guys are coming from, um, a time that, uh, you know, you're coming from the, the trench. Okay. Look, if you're, if you're in any of the trades, the odds are you're not coming from very, very successful, wealthy families, okay? <laughs> All right? Um, usually it's uh, lower to, to middle class, okay? Um, and so we, we, we've been conditioned to think a certain way, and we think a certain way about ourselves, and, and, and coming from that, and when you finally can be successful, and, and you, know, you kind of have the things that you, know, that you dreamed of having one day, you know, a certain kind of car, or being able to do a certain kind of thing, or have you know, money in the bank investments and feel some kind of sense of security. You just want to enjoy life. But the thing about it is, um, you know, things can get out of whack or sideways pretty quickly and, and environments change, economies change, markets change. Okay. Technology changes, right? You got to stay on top of these things. By the way, it's never been easier to have a business. All right. To start a home service business from nothing. It's never been easier and more affordable. Okay. I, I don't want to sound like the old guy that talks about when, you know, going to school back in the day, I had to, I walked to school uphill and snow and blizzards, you know, and then on the way home, we walked uphill for five miles and snow and blizzards, you know, that kind of a thing. But the reality of it is it is easier, but, but still you have to, the emotions are, are pretty much the same. You still have to overcome those emotions in, in these different areas. So that's basically, you know, my story. We wind up, um, you know, during this thriving time, you know, you know, so how, how do we sell? Hey, you, you're going to get hit up. Um, you know, there, there's, you know, I, I, I was hit up by, you know, the other local companies and other little organizations, you know, that want to, you know, you want to sell your business and they're looking to pick you up on a fire sale. Okay. But real money. Okay. Real money. There's, you know, investment groups, um, you know, um, capital organizations, whatever that invest in, you know, that with real money, um, that, that, uh, <laughs> I guess the best way to put it is real money. Um, you know, that, that will eventually come knocking on your door. Once you have an established brand in the marketplace, that they see that you have, you know, your recognized established brand with, you know, a good reputation in the marketplace and have a system in place. Okay. That you're systemized a, a money machine. So really what you have is you have these bigger money machines, the big money machines looking to buy little money machines and making them bigger. Okay. And it's, it's a beautiful thing and that will happen. And it, it happened to us. And, and finally, you know, we're just milking the cow. I tell you, it's a wonderful life. You know, it's, you know, I, I tell all of our students and, you know, our, our clients, look, we're, it, everyone here, it's, it's, everyone here can create a three to $5 million a year home service business, getting a million dollars to the line, to the bottom line. Everybody can do it. It's the market. There's plenty of room. There's plenty of room. Plenty, it's, it's a simple thing to do. Not necessarily easy because you got to do the right things and work through these emotional things we just talked about here. Everyone can do it. Okay. But turning that around to real money, which is what we work, you know, with our clients on is and our students in the academy is, you know, we get you to where you're doing, you know, three to 5 million, which is what we do. It's a beautiful life. It's easy to do that, you know, with, with not a lot of employees, um, 
And, um, you know, it's, 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 and you can stay on top of it when things get a little sideways, it's easy to, you know, pull it back into, into line. Um, but to take something like that, that has a recognized brand and is all systemized. Okay. And you're doing three to 5 million a year. Um, it's not hard to then turn that around. In fact, it's easy then to turn around and sell that for 10 to 15 million or more, just like a client we just had just sold for 30 million. Think about this three and a half years ago. Okay. Now get this in mind. It took me, it took me about 20 years. Okay. <laughs> A client of ours just three and a half years ago was him in a truck with a helper, all right, um, scraping by over $100,000 in debt. And uh, in fact, his marriage was on the brink, okay, of divorce just from all that financial stress. Long story short, working with him three and a half years later, just, just sold for just over $30 million, okay? It's a beautiful thing. He can do it. You can do it, Okay. Um, and that will happen once you have the brand in place and you have your, you know, you're systemized. Okay. You have your little money machine and that's what, that's what happened, happened to us. All of a sudden, um, you know, you're milking the cow. All right. Getting the, the golden eggs and, you know, we're enjoying life and doing stuff. Um, probably a little too, too comfortable. And, um, you know, you get noticed and, you know, we, all of a sudden we had a little bidding, bidding war for our company and the, the bags of money got uh, big enough and we just, Finally said, well, okay, I'll take that bag of money. And, and we left. <laughs> okay. And we just, it was just the right time. And you'll know it too. Um, it, ju it just uh, felt right. And even looking back, I, it was the right time for our family. Um, plumbing had been very, very, very good to us. You know, just another, you know, back, I was a big Reds fan, baseball fan. And there was a, one of our favorite players was Davy Concepcion, uh, shortstop um, for the, for the Reds. And uh, he had, he had a, made a comment, baseball's been very, very good to me. Uh, well, that's what plumbing, plumbing's been very, very, very good to me and um, never expected it. And uh, it got to a point where at that time I was done. It was ready. It just, just felt ready. The money was enough. Okay. Um, it felt I could let it go. I wasn't worried about what, what do I do if I don't do this? Okay. I was in the right, right mindset, that kind of a thing. And, and you will be too. And so, and so we sold and, uh, and I haven't, I haven't looked back. I haven't wished that we didn't sell the plumbing company. I, I don't have the desire to start another home service company. In fact, I get what I do now. I love this. I get to help. I've literally helped now thousands. Um, this is much more enjoyable. And I get the fix of working with the businesses because I get to work with your businesses. <laughs> so so I, get, I get that business fix. Um, but more, it's been, I just used the example of a client just three and a half years sold like that. It took me 20 years. And so the, I enjoy of being able to compact that all down for you. So you don't have to make the same mistakes. Okay. Or the same experiment, you know, have to experiment and try different things. You know, I'm able to tell you, you know, don't do this because, because, because I've made every mistake. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And, um, and you know, what, what's the best systems to have in place and how you want to use it and, you know, numbers, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, I, that, that is fun. So it's, it's been, it's been a pleasure to, to be able to speak with you and, and, and to work with you, but th that's my story. Okay. It really is that it's not, um, there's, there, there's no secret, uh, there's no secret pill or, or rest. Oh, it's, I understand why I get asked that and, and it's easy. And I, and it's, there's a reason why I don't show you all, all my toys and stuff. Cause I want to come across one of the guys online that's so really slick and, um, because it can look like, uh, you know, I, I can't do that. There's also a reason why that I don't tell you exactly what I did or what I sold for, because I don't want you to think, well, I want more than that, you know, and maybe I can't get more than that. I want you to think bigger and better. Okay. And I want that, want that for you. Um, but there's no, um, I, there wasn't, I didn't get some kind of special help or there wasn't a special circumstance. You know, even now everyone can think about the economy, you know, it's always the same for 40 years. I've been in this for 40 years. It's, it's the same, the same issues. Okay. Um, the economy's up and down. Um, presidents come and go. Um, there's wars in the world. Um, I can't find guys. That's always been the issue. Always, always, always. Okay. Um, everything's, you know, hairstyles and music and, you know, you know, has changed and even come back around. Okay. Um, but what hasn't, hasn't changed are those, you know, just life, the way, way things are. Okay. So there's not a special time. This isn't 
you're not successful or not succeeding or, or you're struggling because of how things are now or whatever. That's not, no, it's just, there's just a reality. You start the business, it's new job. Okay. And we're in the mindset. We're going from mindset from tradesmen. Okay. I'm still thinking like a tradesman. All right. You can't, can't do that. We got to learn to think like a CEO. Then when I'm thinking like a CEO, I'm in that survival stage really of putting systems in place and, and figuring out uh, what work, you know, a company may not bring on this marketing company. They just don't work out. Okay. And I got to bring on another marketing company. They don't work out. Okay. It's just going through those struggles, figuring out I'm hiring people when I, you know, I, I can't get the best guys in town right out of the bat. Okay. Cause they really don't know who I am. I don't have a reputation. Right. Okay. So it takes time to work through these guys. So as you're, as you're getting your team, your, your team's up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, by the way, it's always that way. Okay. Um, so it's that survival time. You're figuring that those things out, but, but, R relatively soon, all right, when you work through it and stay with it and you're working on those things, all of a sudden everything clicks. Now you're in the thriving stage, okay? And things just blow up on you. It just, it just takes off on you, okay? And, you know, you can either kind of panic. In fact, some guys, you know, we do. But the client I just mentioned uh, that sold for 30 million, uh, I remember the conversation we had with him when he had a million dollars sitting in the bank and it was like, well, I, I, what, I can't, first of all, you know, it's all the emotion. What do I do with the money? What do I do with this? And I'm not, I'm not this. I mean, is, is that where we, where we come from? Okay. When you start making money um, and you have start having these things, there's this inner conflict. Okay. Cause we've been conditioned to think that's bad, that people have money are bad, all those kinds of things. Well, it's dealing with, dealing with those, those kinds of things. So, you know, you, you'll have to, you know, there's a reality of working through those kinds of things, but it, you know, it's been, it's a great life and it's never been easier to uh you know start a home service business okay and it's um it is it is the security it is your 401k on steroids okay if emotionally you'll make it through these things you know looking looking back and it's even what i tell you know what we, we teach our students and our clients look it's 20 percent of, of your successes is based on you know having the right systems and stuff and things in place 80 percent of your success is dependent on dependent upon what you have going on in here. Okay. What, what, what we're telling ourselves, you know, how we've been conditioned, how we can recondition ourselves, um, you know, how we look at the world, all those kinds of things. Um, but it's 80% that. And fortunately, looking back, um, it's, it, it was good that I was a little bit of a dreamer and um, it, coming from the rough background. And if I'm speaking with you, the odds are you're, you're, you're kind of a similar kind of, you know, you didn't have a silver spoon in your mouth, right? All that kind of stuff. All right. Coming from a rougher background um, actually happens to be good. It could help you, it helps you fight. Okay. It helps you, uh, it, um, you know, during that, even the new job and in the, in the survival time. Okay. While you're getting hit. All right. It helps you move along. All right. Um, but it's it, on, on, the, on the other side of that, being a little bit of a dreamer then too helps helps with the vision. So like a lot of the guys, you know, we talk with you or whatever, and you ha you have these dreams, that's good. All right. Cause you need that vision. You need that, that destination that you're working towards. Okay. And so it's good to have, you know, both those, both those things. And fortunately I did. So if I had anything, I guess that, you know, what, what could be different about me, which it isn't different is that I did come from a rough background and I had survival in me. I was used to fighting and having to make my way right? And then also I was a dreamer, okay? I had a vision um, that, you know, that my plumbing company, in fact, when I started my plumbing company, I started, I remember when I came home and told the lovely Laura, you know, um, I got, I got let go, but I'm going to start a plumbing business. In fact, I'm, we're, we're going to franchise it. And she's like, what? <laughs> so that was the dreamer in me, okay? And so I was always working towards that, you know, as well. So I guess those would be the you know, maybe some ingredients that, uh, that I, I think that made it, made it possible. And I know you have those ingredients as well. Okay. So those aren't unique ingredients. Um, it's not something you have to buy or, or, you know, it's not a certain, you know, demographic or whatever. Okay. It's just, you, you can have those things. All right. So there we go. That's, that's my story. As the saying goes, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Okay. Hey, I hope that, uh, hel helps you a little bit for those of, you know, those of you asking, you know, so how, how'd you, uh, how'd you start your, your business and then wind up selling it? So that's it.